have we got vocals? Hopefully. Yeah, we do. Right! So... Wait, hold on, is that... Audio fine? Yeah, it's okay! Right, it's time for another glorious turnaround of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. <coughs> Excuse me, I've... <coughs> I cleared my throat and all that before I started, so I wouldn't have to do that, and already I'm starting to mute this up again. Right, so... Before I get... <coughs> okay. This is a terrible start. Right, so before I do get going, I have had a cold for the past week, and... Uh, things are pretty shit as far as that goes. So... Yeah, uh... Wasn't too great. Um... My throat's been at me all week, and I've just felt generally sick. Let me turn off my phone. Just, yeah, so if I sound a bit wonky during the stream, a bit more than usual, um, and I can't do my terrible voices as terrible as I, as I usually do them, then, you know, I apologize. And if I end up having to clear my throat, or making any disgusting noises on mic, I'll try and limit that, but yeah, hopefully it won't end up like that. Because I do hate whenever that happens. So, yeah. Right. We are going with more Ace Attorney. It's been a while coming, been, you know, took a week break last week. Uh, because of wrestling and that, but yeah, here we are. Alright, so, <clears throat> court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, your honor. Fuck you, Von Karma, you bastard. Last week, or two weeks ago, we ended with Von Karma tasering us in the evidence room to steal evidence from the DL6 case. So, let's see how it goes. The prosecution is ready. Um, very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. I feel like I've lost touch with my Van Karma voice, which was one of the few I felt I had done well. Come on, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. I mean, right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. Yeah, it was an awful, awful week of feeling of having a bad cold. My brother brought it in from school, from his school, and just, oh, awful. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where we, from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away yesterday? was not running away, as he will now testify. I, I see. Very well. Please begin your testimony. Uh. Er, I'm really sorry. I, I don't even remember what my Yanni Yogi voice was, but whatever. I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't run away or nothing. I um, went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. Uh, I mean, I'd need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. I had a much better old man voice, I think, last time. 
I forget. Hmm, very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name! Yanni Yogi! You're Yanni Yogi, and I'm going to prove it! Alright. Alright, let's get back into saving, uh... Just in case we fuck it up like that previous time. I'm really sorry about you- Right, yeah. Okay, I've already done all that. I'd call what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realised you were in danger. Now- Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. He sure seems relaxed. In fact, they both do. Von Karma and Yanni Yogi. Then why did you leave? He's just about to say why. Is it so hard for you to just quietly listen when someone is talking? If I sat quietly, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. It, it's true. Food? Well, Polly is a bit of a gourmand, you'll see. She only eats these high-quality bird pellets from France. They only have them in the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker's shack? Uh, well, I kind of got lost, you see. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's going to believe that. Hmm, I see. So he was lost. Please, your honor, come to your senses. Yeah, fucking judge. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, yep. It seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh, or... Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. How am I meant to so how am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? That's impossible. Oh, I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. Uh, I need I'd need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory, otherwise it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes? Yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said that he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Order! Order! Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying... Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Now, this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So, who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us the witness's name. 
His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi! From the DL6 incident! It figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi. Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And I'll let you repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick! How are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. That makes sense. Disk, disk, disk. Hmm? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints? Er, uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned me fingers while working with the stuff. Uh, yup. What? Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No! Miss this disc. Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? It seems that the case has been decided. No. No! I know what happened. I know everything. I, I just can't prove it. But no, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick! What are we gonna do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? This this disc. Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief. Mm. Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karman. Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot? What is it, Nick? No, you're not going to... Your Honor... The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On my... proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. Order. Order! Order! Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Did you even ask? This is a farce. I object. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. <sighs> well, if you're so desperate, then please, be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing goes out of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy! Well, still one 
to go through with your little game. <coughs> Fuck, Von Karma's gonna kill me. Let the parrot take the stand! That is... that is my favourite line of all time. I will cross-examine her, Your Honour. This is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Von Karma's rigged every person's testimony. Every piece of evidence. Except the parrot! She's my last chance! At least, I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot! My second favourite line of all time. Aw, oh, who's a pretty birdie? That's quite a bird! Please, tell us your name! Name! The witness is ignoring me. Christ, sake, judge. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Ahem. Very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please, er, testify for us. Hello! Hello! Certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well. Begin your cross-examination. Right. What are you gonna do, Nick? I... I don't know. What do we do, Mia? Hmm. Right. Save here, too, just in case. Witness, you're here to speak. You must speak to me. Frankly, I can't believe that you're speaking to the parrot. Uh, I guess we should try to get some in. Right, okay. This is just the first one we can. I wanted to question the second bit in case we had more stuff out of it. Witness, you can't just expect to say. You can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right, uh, what do I say? As I recall, two days ago... Pa-Pa-Li! pa Have we forgotten something? <coughs> Don't forget! DL6! <coughs> I can get Polly to say that here. That would prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello! Hello! Rah! That's... that's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot! Something we forgot! Hello! Hello! Rah! Uh-oh, it's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? This, this, this. Something the matter, Mr. Wright. Wait, don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot, could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? Yeah, that would have been too easy, I guess. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly. <laughs> Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this pirate is named Polly. To be fair, Judge, you did just ask it its name and it didn't tell you, so... Does this have anything to do with the owner's identity? Yes, it does. Ha! Fascinating. We claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity. And show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? 
friends. We're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the Paris name reveals the caretaker's identity is... Uh... Yeah, Polly Jenkins, his fiance. Okay. The DL6 case file? That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on, then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Very well, Mr. Wright, please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to this Paris name? It's on the Suspect Data page. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiancée committed suicide, see? Indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiancée's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiancée who had committed suicide. That's why he named his para after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Bah! A mere coincidence. That's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix, right? Does this make you my granddaughter's fiancée? She's, She's only seven years old. Indeed. Alone is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. <coughs> Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more. If we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? F Very well, witness. You may continue. Thing to the safe, right? Which is the 1218, which is the date of the. Let's, uh, huh? The safe, why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number to the safe in the shack? 1228! 1228! Hi, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Yeah. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. <laughs> Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? Yeah, the date. The DL6 case file? What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in the file is something relating to that safe number? It's on the case summary page. The case summary? Specifically, the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident? December 28. Why, well, that's today's date. 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Aha! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. This is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I am number one. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence. That's all. True, that is a possibility. However, Two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. 
Immediately. Witness, tell us your name. Wait. This witness, he doesn't remember. No. No. It's okay. He's lucid! I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to his hideous true identity. Acting for 15 years. But well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order! Order! Yanni Yogi! So, was it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So, I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my, finan or my social standing. Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Von Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then, the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is... Innocent, in this case, at least. Very well. Would the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. That is all. This court is adjourned. Objection! Oh god, that smile on Von Karma's face. Did, did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth? Your Honor. I object to your judgment. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's gonna say he's guilty. He's gonna tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's gonna tell them he killed his own dad. Uh-oh, what do I do? The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edgeworth's outburst. Didn't something like this 
happened yesterday too. I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. For 15 years, I have had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean, in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer, the criminal in the DL6 incident, it was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. The dramatic oaf. Order! Order! This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. It's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We try this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think, I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. Okay. 2.24 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. I'm sorry, right? I've just wa wasted all of your effort. Edgeworth? I just don't believe it, sir. What was my gumshoe voice? You kill your dad? I didn't want to believe in myself, detective. But it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy. Just crazy. Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. But what are you talking about, Powell? He just admitted to it! He confessed that he did it! In court! I'm, so I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe you're a nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. <coughs> in any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Right. Okay, back in the courtroom. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though pointless, let the defense do the cross examining. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? 
Miles Edgeworth. I am a prosecuting attorney. Miss Mr. Edgeworth. Fifteen years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. And testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please. Please! That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream? We were stuck in the elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. The same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Save! I don't want to be going through everything again just to get to this part. So I'll be saving at pretty much every separate testimony. What was the trial your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. I know my father lost, and Mr. Von Karma was the prosecuting attorney. Mr. Von Karma, you were handling that case? It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. That was when Edward pointed out the problem in Von Karma's evidence. So, there were three people, including yourself, trapped in the elevator. Yes, myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first, but then as time passed, and no one came to help. What did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then... What was it? A pistol? I assume it was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. And you picked it up. What happened next? Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick, I panicked. So, you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was... I was... in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. The gun fired once. Yes. I think, after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and the horrible scream. The scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. To this day? Yes, I can practically hear it now. I doubt I will ever forget that scream, as long as I live. There it is. One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence, but I don't know what it means. I'd better find out, and quick. 
I think I remember where this case goes now uh, from my previous playthrough, so I won't spoil it while doing this. As in, like, I, I remember... Thing. Not how I get there, so I'm still fucking struggling with that. Right, um... Okay, so... That's the autopsy report. We don't need to worry about this too much. No clues found on the scene. Okay. Single gunshot. Okay, so that's... Yeah. So we present the case file and it's under... <coughs> victim data. Okay. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence, unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Smiles Edward's testimony? Look at the victim data on this file. It says that quite plainly, the murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet, the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was an accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as... Or, Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with the incident. What? Hmm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with the case? I'm gonna save here because I'm not sure of the answer and just in case it fucks me over. I was... <coughs> oh, shit! I didn't notice the bullet hole in the elevator door. How the fuck was that look overlooked? It fucking, I feel like everyone's dumb in this court system. Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you the proof. What? Impossible. No, no, Mr. Van Karma. Save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to the incident? Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. Did my phone do an OK Google thing while I was talking? I just looked at my phone and just looked up Tony Braxton. Uh, so, yeah. If, if there was a noise in the background of my phone talking about Tony Braxton, then I do apologize. <clears throat> well, I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the same time at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. 
So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Your, your honor, please, get a clue. Yeah, exactly. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see. A bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edwards was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Order! Order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edwards' heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that defendant lost that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your well fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary? That's on page one. Look, look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. A second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory's life was one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. It was undoubted. Something, undoubtedly, something else that made the bullet a hole in the door. Fucking getting worse with the voice now. Order! I will have order! Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Frank Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. This this disc. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Ah, how did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet doesn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I I. It looks I was like I was wrong. Nick, if the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. No! But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edward declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just when I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it, I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person. Someone else who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood on Saul for 15 years. Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. <coughs> Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes. Um, yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No, no, I do not. So, you killed your father, though it, that was not your intention. Yes, I did. Oh no. He's accepted the guilt. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying. But my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, 
apologies for the bit of a just Objection! Your Honor. Your Honor, I object. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Is that right? I'm a Christ, you object to him. Oof. Or oof. Nick? I don't know. His case is perfect. Oh no! It must exist! Second bullet. What? What did you just say? Nothing! The second bullet must exist! But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce as any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. I, uh, the second bullet. It, uh, it existed. What? But we've just heard proof that it did not exist. I, I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It, it's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, the murderer. I'm, I'm still thinking about that one. So the criminal took the second bullet, but why? Huh? First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? Why would the murderer have spent time to look for that stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Uh, um... to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. <laughs> Had to take it. Had to take it? The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Yeah, I can't remember if I figured this out back whenever I originally played through the game, but yeah. Just, you know, I don't know whether to let the game play it out or whether to talk about it myself. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. I mean, okay, I mean, like, it's getting obvious now, right? So it had to be taken because the gunshot... It, the, the bullet was in the murderer, or whoever took it. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, um, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take the bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance what? Uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer? I can't believe he didn't cop onto that earlier. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I copped onto that. I think I did. Maybe I didn't. It's been a long time since I played it, but yeah. The bullet hit, hit the murderer? Just staying, for instance. I mean... If it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. Y you know? Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head. But what if that's what really happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer himself was shot? And they left with the second bullet still inside of them? Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime? Uh, yes. I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from the elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean... The murderer came from outside, yes. Two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet... The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Hmm. 
Mr. Wright. You are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I have ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick! Huh? <coughs> I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow! It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take the vacation because of shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. Oh, man! Yeah. I, I, I do find it interesting how it, like, sort of... <coughs> With conjecture, they luckily get there to this to thinking it's Von Karma. Uh, not to spoil it, but it is Von Karma. I mean, I guess that once it's said, spread out for you like this, it should be obvious. I guess. Uh, with the evidence, at least. So, yeah. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. Uh, n no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it now? I'm not gonna have proof, am I? Save it for a better time. We'll try to save it for a better time. I, I can't remember which way it goes. As I say, I can't remember any of these cases. I, I need to stop saying that in general uh, every time it comes up, but yeah. Well, I don't have enough proof yet. This is my trump card. I'd better save it for the right time. Mr. Wright, something the matter? I am fine, Your Honor. Disc, disc, disc. Shall we carry on with the trial then? Mm. That said, we have no farther to go. All that is left is the finish. In other words, the verdict. Well, what? Not yet. Think, Mr. Wright. You have said that someone from the outside was the murderer. Yet you cannot suggest anyone as a possible suspect, which means your conjecture is worthless, and will be rejected, of course. Nick! Now's the time to be hold now's no time to be holding on to that trump card. The trial's almost over. Alright, I may not know what I'm doing, but here goes. Okay. I figured it, I figured that we would have maybe tried to get Von Karma to do a, a testimony. Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? V -v 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 My ha hands are shaking. V -v what? Von Karma! Von Karma? He's smiling about it, huh? You mean THE Von Karma? The prosecutor? The one standing right over there? Ha! Ah. You... you don't object? I see no need. My honor is ridiculous, I burst with my objection. Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident? Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery. No. Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. <sighs> Nick, let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Ed Edgeworth? I know Von Karma. Perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. 
he probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Kara pull the bullet out by himself? That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait, what does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but where? Disc, disc, disc. Well, Mr. Wright, can't you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? All right, Von Karma, I'll prove it. We have our metal detector still, so... Yeah. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. What? The evidence that proves... Or, the evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery, leaving an evidence trail. I didn't work this bit out back in the day, by the way. Man, my nose is getting clogged again. Uh, I didn't work this bit out. I was kind of rolling with it at this stage. So now I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it unlikely that Von Carbon performed surgery on himself. Also, apologies if my, my nose is really getting blocked now. Jesus. You, you don't mean... I do. There is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Carbon. Is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. Oh, here we go. Now he's getting nervous. I refuse. You refuse? But refusing this means you acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you. Order! 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 Hold on, just excuse me one second. Still working. Yep, it is. That's good. I just needed to clean my nose again. Uh, I didn't want to do it on the mic, so you know, better to pause. Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for inspection of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out in this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. <clears throat> Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Van Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. It reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet! Mr. Von Karma? You. It was you. I was afraid this would happen. And so, I remained silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. But, but Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no application to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here. Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? 
Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 in evidence. That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. Um... Christ, okay. Alright, the ballistic markings, okay. But that's... A bullet? Where did you get that? You think if he took it from the records room yesterday, he would have made sure he still had it? Unless he just, like, dumped a box of stuff and thought it was still in there? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely, with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Mr. From Gregory Edwards' heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. In other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? That scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait, I know. I can't breathe. Quiet. I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air. I, I'll stop you. Stop breathing my air. Get away. Get away from my father. So on. It's that scream I heard in the elevator. Fifteen years ago! Von Karma, it was you who screamed! Mr. Von Karma? What to find me? So, it was you. You and your father are my curse. Your father shamed me with the penalty of my record. And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade. I, I'll bury you. I'll bury you with my bare hands. Death. Death. Okay, we've given Von Karma a fucking breakdown. Chief Prosecutor, I am sorry. Von Karma, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. Edgeworth. It was a 
Shocked. None I have ever known. Me. Penalized. It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. I was in pain. A horrible, burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lay unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a bladium, a medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. This this disc. Who would have thought another man would have come to open the elevator door? Judge. Well, what? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now, end it. Very well. It appears that we have come to a very long way, a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. That is all. The court is adjourned. There we fucking go. We've done it. Caused Van Karma to have that breakdown. Nick! Nick! We did it! Did you see his face? Van Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool. But inside you crushed him, Nick. You crushed. I gotta say, I'm impressed. It was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know. I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now, it's all just a good memory. So, it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right? Yeah? I'm not sure how to say this. I know. I know. Try. Right, thank you. I, I see. Thank you, right. You, you, you're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. <sighs> Sorry, I'm, I'm not good at this sort of thing. You've got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's got you there. Whoop! Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. My salary went down a bit this month, but who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth? You should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. I see. Whoop! I, I, I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edward this unguarded. Hey, y'all! Lada! Y'all were great in there! Thank you! Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course! Just look at you! You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there! on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be, guy be, be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? 
remember me? Oh, I went back to college. Is this like a day later or something? I gave up trying to be an investigator and photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the car? Huh? It's over, Nick! My life is over! Well, but why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick! I'm not long for this world! Uh, you don't look sick. It's Keonza. She's She's gonna live in Paris! Paris, Nick! She's leaving me behind! Should have seen that coming. Oh, Edgy, there you are! Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy! Here, a little gift for me in celebration! Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts! You come along tonight, too, my treat, pal! Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. That's to suit the question. When he says tree, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? Well, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah? What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me. It's got money in it. Well, yeah. That's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? Huh? What a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little and it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? Nick! Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? 38 No. No! Larry, it was you! What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. <laughs> Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really right. I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth. Hmm? You should have told me. No, no, Nick. It was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, you've always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. Yeah. And you get worked up too easily, too! The death! The death sentence for both of you! Man, if only I had known, I'd have become a prosecutor! The same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth, want to switch right? Hey, y'all! Line up, I'll take a photo! Hey, photo time, let's go! And after that, dinner on me! Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. December 29th, 5 a.m. Whoa, I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? It's still only 5 a.m. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter? 
Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you, it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium. In training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. But I couldn't. I was useless. So I've decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. Goodbye? What time is it? Yeah, the first trains from the mountains have already left. To the station. Save this for a reason. I guess I'm too late. Hey! The Nick! Mia! So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Wait! What? I never could have saved Edward without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Maya's voice. You heard my sister? Yes, only your voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karen, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in the days. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Evidence? Alright. That's to be the bullet, right? Because I'm pretty sure she took that. She found it. A bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all of the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. So, this is it. See you soon, Maya. Aww. Adorable. Thanks, Nick. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now, a new story begins. With the same old crazy cast of characters. Ah, don't think you're graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim? Er, yes, your honor. Uh-oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Pal, Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct and wish me a happy birthday. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Whoop, Detective Gumshoe. Then he hung his head low and went right back outside. Kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? Oh, this is some really good music. Nah, I haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. Ah, Missy's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you'd call a cheap date. Huh? Oh, she's in Hawaii right now, yeah. Yeah. Larry always has his type. Who? Right? Yeah, I remember him. I hear he's been busy lately. 
You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. I definitely don't remember the voice that I did for Pain, so... The defense attorney for whom I wrote the affidavit for, yes. Oh, you should know. I've taken over management of the Gate Water Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. Aha! Um, oh, it's you, Phoenix Wright. Ah, yes, my is understudy, was he not? I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him of late. Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Phoenix right? Is he an actor? Well, I'm not biased. You can't be a star. Why do I sound like Yoda more thing? Yeah, okay, there she goes off on her thing. <coughs> I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is a hit. I sure owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. Hmm. Oh, I'm keeping my face out of the public eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin many kids' dreams, you know? from Maya the other day. Sounds like she caught a cold standing under the waterfall. Maybe that's what I did. I wanted to visit, but didn't have time, so I sent her some Pink Princess trading cards. She says she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at, anyway? Oh, hey, it's Cody. Right? Who's that? You want to talk? Let's talk Pink Princess, all right. But, you know, I snuck into the th studio the other day, and I saw her, the one inside the pink princess suit. Ugh, what a dog. It was kind of a shock for a boy of my tender age. Yeah, I remember, right? That lawyer guy. Huh, me, I'm in training to become a paranormal photographer. You know, that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real, no, there's, that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. Okay, Lotta, whatever you say. Now we get our fifth episode. Uh, if I recall correctly, I think this had stuff added specifically for the DS, I think. Uh, I could be wrong about that. But I'm pretty sure it had uh, things directly added for the DS release. To give people a reason to, or even the PC release, I don't know. No way, because it was originally released on PC, right? There's certainly, there's certainly something different to this uh, compared to the normal games, I'm pretty sure. The normal, the previous four cases, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah. Okay. We will come back to this next time. Yep, save progress, get it all done. And we will come back for Rise from the Ashes next week uh, at the latest. Uh... I'm pretty sure I'm not busy next Saturday night, so yeah, we can we can get deep into it. Cool. Right, well, it's been fun. Thanks for, you know, the usual tuning in and all. Uh, hopefully, you know, I, I want to get doing some more stuff like Man of Medan and that kind of thing. Uh, soon, I really want to up my streaming, especially now that we're approaching the winter, so yeah. Maybe do some more Apex. 
do a few other things. But yeah, so that that is uh, that is Edgeworth saved, and uh, Maya is now off, and all that. So that is all that done. Cool. I also I I should say I want to get Yakuza Zero started again. I'm excited for the RPG elements of Yakuza Seven, so I want to get through like that and Judgment and all that kind of thing. So you know soon. Right, cool. I'm done here. Thanks for tuning in and all the, the usual. It's been fun. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the the original four episodes of Phoenix Wright. And we will get round to the bonus episode soon, uh, or next week. And then hopefully get started on the second game not too long after that. Which was actually the first game I played of the Phoenix Wright series from what I remember. I'm pretty sure. Uh... Also happened to be uh, an American import, I think. I still have it. Uh, still have the cartridges from the DS, so yeah. Right, cheerio.